Hey guys, welcome back to the Movie Project. Today we're going to talk about a common squat fault called the butt wing. Alright, I had the butt wing, so you're in luck. So what happens during the butt wing is someone goes down into a deep squat, working on depth, and at the bottom they get into this posterior tilted position. I'm going to go ahead and go even slower for you this time. You can see my back stays straight, my hips are in a good position. And right about there you see them tilt downward. What happens when you get that into that position at the bottom of the squat is you lose tension in the hamstrings. Hamstrings are a prime mover. You lose strength as you come out of the bottom. So in order not to fail and to um, have to bail on the way to the bottom of the squat, you want to have that hamstring tension so you don't want to be in that posterior tilted position or get the butt weight. So we've got mobility for you. We've got a little bit of core stability for you that's going to help you uh, fix that problem. All right, for starters, grab your handy dandy the cross ball. What's going on is for me, it's my proximal hamstring that's really tight right underneath my SGL tuberosity. So I'm going to smash into the cross ball right underneath my butt, right at the top of my hip, and look for tight corners. All right, I found one. What I'll do in that spot is elongate the hamstring and relax. All right, typically do about five or 10 reps here. The real goal is to always make a change, okay? So don't put just a rep range on it if you have the time. Take a lot of time until you actually feel like you can get that tenderness subside. All right, after I get through some pumps there, I'm gonna brace my midsection and work on hinging from my hip while I'm smashing into the tissue. All right, it's just another way to do that active release. All right, work on one side for a few minutes, then switch to the other. When you get done with that, similar, Concepts, well, let's go to the band, do some distraction. So you hop on into the band, take it up to your hip. We've done the band and distraction posteriorly before, but what we're going to do this time, instead of just reach down for the toes, is brace the midsection. Sometimes it even helps me to take my hands behind my head and start to fall this way. I like to keep my knees slightly bent so that I'm not stretching my sciatic too much. All right? But if I work into this enough, I could probably start to work into a straight leg move, very similar, and work into that position the same way. Again, tight midsection, brace, then start to hinge. Knee bent version for 10, knee straight version for 10. When I get through that, the last thing that I want to do is work on keeping that core stability while I do a hip hinge, and it's easiest to do on the floor when you have the feedback behind your lower back. So I'm going to lie down. I'm going to put a block or something on top of my foot. Sometimes I just take my shoe off and put it on top of my bare foot. I'm going to brace my midsection so I have the feedback from the floor, make sure I can feel it on my low back. And keeping this leg totally straight, I'm going to do what's called a heel drop. All right, so I'm just going to come down, tap my heel to the floor, and pull back up to the top. All right, as I go through that, I can feel it getting tougher for my midsection to stay stable and stay flat on the floor. I'm going to keep going until I feel like I've really fatigued myself and I'm starting to have a problem keeping the brace position. So typically I say to do 20 reps, focus on asymmetries, but if you have done with your mobility sequence, go back to the test, so do your deep squat, but actually work on all these cues while you're going through the squat. So brace the midsection. When you start, I need you to grip the ground with all your toes so you create what's called torque in the floor. So I'm squeezing my glutes, tightening up here, chin back, all those postural things are happening all at one time before I even start the movement, and I'm gripping the ground with all my toes. As I sink back, I sit back nice and tight, I feel at the bottom, before I start to, to tilt, I come back up, all right? So I'm going to use a ball because I know the depth before I start to tilt. Find that depth, get yourself a piece of equipment to give yourself that feedback. Two feet in, tight midsection, sit back, and drive up, all right? I want to keep that tension in the hamstrings all the way through the move. So make sure that you're bracing, go through all those postural cues, test, retest, um, and good luck.